for certain cancers where we know it can only work in a specific situation that has a specific marker, having a companion diagnostic makes a lot of sense. You want to select those patients by having the marker and then give the targeted agent. Immunotherapies are actually targeted agents, but in they're using the immune system to attack the cancer. And the immune system cells work by having a specific receptor called the T-cell receptor. And the T-cell receptor will recognize a different ligand on every cancer. So it's hard to think that we're going to have a one biomarker for immunotherapy. There may be this not companion diagnosis, but something that enriches the population to be more likely to respond or not would make more sense. I think the majority of melanoma practitioners are not ordering PDL1. I don't see it ordered with my colleagues at UCLA and in academic centers or the people that come from the community. That's because it does not separate enough patients who are likely to respond or not. It enriches responses, but that doesn't mean that the negative testing will lead to no response. So I think the implementation in the field of a PDL1 assay for melanoma has been very low. I do not use a PDL1 test in my practice for patients with melanoma. Um, the data, I think, does not support it, and it would, uh, even with a negative test, it would not preclude me from thinking that particular patient may still benefit because some patients with negative testing still benefit. In the years since the first trials of, P of PD-1 and PDL one blocking antibodies, there's been a lot of interest in looking for the ligand and selecting patients based on that. The first studies uh, used assays that were, hard, uh, that were not that reproducible. Both the antibodies that were trying to detect PDL one or the assay process to process the tissue to get the, uh, the results were not that well established. Now we have very robust assays for PDL one where the data that we get back re correctly reflects what's happening in the tumor. But then it's not only the specificity and the sensitivity of the assay, it's the biological interpretation. If there's not an immune response, there's not going to be interferon gamma being produced, and then the tumor may not produce, uh, express PDL1 when it's produced as a reactive or a protection from the presence of an immune response. So not detecting and calling a tumor negative may not really be a negative tumor. If you unleash an immune response, like for example, the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab brings a lot of T cells into tumors by uh, releasing CTLA-4, which is upstream, and then releasing PD-1, which is downstream. You get a lot of T cells in the tumor, and now the baseline assessment has changed. If there were no T cells, maybe the tumor could not protect itself by expressing PD-L1. If you bring them in, then the tumor may become positive, but it would have been read as negative before.